Hello everybody, Chris here, and in this video we're going to be doing a tutorial for GreenShot, which is a print screen image capturing tool on your computer that effectively just goes and replaces the default one for Windows. So if you don't already know, with default Windows you can hit print screen on your keyboard, and that will actually copy the current screen into an image buffer that you can paste into programs like Paint to save a capture of the screen. Um, now with GreenShot, which when you open it up will put an icon in your notification area, it not only allows you to do the print screen screen capture, but when you're using GreenShot, it will go ahead and replace that default function and add extra options for you to use. For instance, capturing a selected window rather than the entire screen, capturing a region, which is the default functionality, so you can still have it capture the entire screen even with capture region. Uh, capture full screen is the way to make sure you get everything all at once. And then capture last region is going to take the last spot you selected with capture region and capture that exact same spot again. So let's actually use some of these tools and then we'll talk more about everything else down here that you can do with GreenShot. So when you use Capture Region inside of GreenShot, it's going to give you two intersecting lines that have a very specific point um, that's going to be one of the corners of a rectangle you select for your image. So this can be any corner you want, bottom left, bottom right, top right, or top left. And when you click it, you can drag in any direction to create a, a box region that's going to be captured as your image. So as you can see, this can be any size, any ratio you want. Um, for instance, if we just want to capture this entire tree here, we can scroll this to where we want it and let go. But one thing that you will notice here, this giant magnifying glass, it's actually quite helpful because if you're trying to get a per pixel perfect solution, having it zoomed in all the way at the precise pixel level, will make sure that you actually get it in the bounds that you want it to so that you don't accidentally cut one pixel off from the left or the right or up or down. But let's go over here and we will let go in order to capture and save that image. Now you have a lot of different options here. The default one, save as, is just where you take that image and you save it to a file on your computer. In most cases that's probably going to be what you want. Um, you can see that there's an option for preferred file output settings, which is where you have default quick settings rather than a save as dialog box. So for instance, with the save as dialog box, you can have it specify as JPEG, PNG, BMP, but if you do the other option where you just use the preferred settings, if you have it set up preferred settings to save as a PNG, it'll just always save as a PNG. The default file name includes the date and uh, the name of the window, if there was one, that you were trying to capture. So if you capture the window of a game, it's going to have the name of that game combined with the date. So let's just save this on the desktop there, and it's going to appear here in a second. We can double click that to open it just as we can any other image on our computer. Now let's demonstrate Capture Last Region now that I've added an extra icon into that region. Uh, this little Unity app here. It should capture that app inside of the screenshot, but it should take the screenshot from the same region. So capture last region, and we will save as on the desktop again. And if we open that up, you can see that the Unity icon was captured. So here I've opened up OpenOffice Writer, and we can do a capture of that window by going to Greenshot or hitting the key combinations in the keyboard, Alt Print Screen in this case, and we are going to select this window over here. You can see that as you hover around the different windows in your Windows desktop, it's going to automatically detect which window you're trying to capture and put the bounds specifically for that window. So here we'll just select that, save as, and a new screenshot to the desktop. As you can see, it takes the title of the window and saves that as part of the name for the image. So we'll save that to the desktop. We can open that up and see that it's a pixel perfect capture of the window. None of the desktop has been captured, only the window itself. So that can be a pretty handy tool. So let's do a capture full screen here and I'm going to use the short key for that which is control print screen. Pops up the dialog. So save as to the desktop. And if we open that image you can see that it's just the entire desktop, everything that was open at that particular time. 
Capture window from list will allow you to select one of the open windows on your Windows desktop and immediately save that as an image. So rather than basically targeting the image, we just select it from a list. So save as and we'll capture the web browser for Amazon.com. And that's been saved there. Great. But now let's talk a little bit about these configuration options down here. We'll skip over the third party apps for right this second and go down to preferences instead. So here we have the ability to set hotkeys, although personally I like the original hotkeys, print screen, it's just used for capturing images across all platforms. But if you want to change it, it's there. Um, probably more relevant to you, preferred output file settings. As we were talking about, when you capture an image using GreenShot, you can either use the Save As dialog, or you can use the preferred output file settings. So here you can see the storage location by default is my desktop. The file name pattern here has a bunch of placeholders which help determine how these files should be named. So you can see where it says YYYY, that means the year with four digits. And over here on the right, the title is basically symbolized for the title of the window. And when it actually captures the image, it just goes ahead and replaces those things. An image format, probably very relevant. Uh, if you want to save some space, JPEG images do take up less room than PNG because PNG has the ability to do things like transparency. Uh, though I guess for a green shot image, since you're not editing it in Photoshop, it's not going to have any transparency to begin with. So you could change that to P JPEG if you want to. Down here, quality settings. If you want your image to look a little bit nicer, you can bump it up past a JPEG quality of 80. Um, 80 is probably going to be perfectly fine for you in most cases, but if you increase it, it's going to basically have more data in it and may look slightly nicer to the keenest of eyes. If you drop it down too low, it may look kind of sloppy, but you have the ability to play around with that there if you desire. And on the plugins tab, as you can see, it's actually possible to drop plugins into GreenShot. So if you wanted to install one, it would go to C Drive, Program Files, GreenShot, Plugins, and then you would drop it into that directory. Um, most of the plugins here are probably going to be what you need. That's all of the functionality for integrating it with things like Flickr, where you can just do a direct upload, or Dropbox as well. So with these menus over here that talk about configuring those third-party apps, Photobucket, Flickr, Dropbox, the configurations for these apps are mostly the same. Basically, it comes down to selecting what kind of image format you want to save to those particular tools. So if you want to upload a JPEG rather than PNG, you can select that here from uh, the settings menu. And for sites like Photobucket, where GreenShot will automatically capture the image link on your computer, basically the path to your image on your computer on the clipboard, so you can copy and paste that in, uh, you can instead have it set up so that when you save an image and you upload it to Photobucket straight through GreenShot, it gives you the link to that web address instead. So that may be an option you want to select. But as you can see, opening up Dropbox settings, it's more or less the same kind of thing in each of these different configurations. Now, for actually uploading those to the sites straight through GreenShot, what you got to do is when you do do a print screen, and you have an image ready to go, rather than just saving it to your computer, you're going to choose upload to the individual services that you have down here. So for instance, if I wanted to upload to Dropbox, I would select upload to Dropbox from the menu. It will try to pull up an authentication window with that particular tool and all of these different apps have them. So now you need to sign into Dropbox to authenticate yourself. And so once you've gone ahead and authenticated with Dropbox, you'll be able to upload the image into the cloud storage that is Dropbox. Okay, so as you can see, exported to Dropbox, that's what we want. If we click on that, it's actually going to bring up the file inside of our web browser. So you can see that we have the image inside of Dropbox right now, just like that. And also, as I was mentioning earlier about the page link, how you can have it set up so that GreenShot will put the page link in your computer's copy-paste clipboard buffer. If I hit Control v right here, it's not giving me the path to the image on my computer anymore, but rather it's giving me the path, the short path, to the image online on Dropbox. So if I hit Enter here, it's going to take us to the exact same image with the full path there. And the process for the other tools is going to be essentially the same.
Now, two more tools you'll notice that we have here, MS Paint, Microsoft Paint, pretty much the simplest uh, image editor that's default to all Windows computers. You can have the image get pasted into Paint rather than to your desktop or wherever you want to save it. Instead, and uh, the reason you might do that is just so that you can edit the image. So if you want to maybe draw a circle around something or type in some text, those are very simple things you can add in with Microsoft Paint. Also, you will have seen Mozilla Thunderbird there. That's an email client. So if you want to attach this to an email, choosing Thunderbird from the menu will put it in a new email already included as an attachment. And although I wouldn't personally recommend doing this immediately without having the image saved first, you can send your screen caps to the printer immediately. Um, but that will mean whatever results you get, you won't have seen it yet, and it, it just prints out as a paper. So you probably want to save it on your desktop and then print it out normally. And if you just prefer to copy it to clipboard so that you can paste it into Photoshop or something like that, copy to clipboard is a fine option. It'll notify you that it's copied it to the clipboard and then you just open up whatever image editing app you want and you can control V, paste it in. So I've been Chris. Thanks for taking a look at the GreenShot app on Windows computers with me and hopefully I'll see you guys in my future content.